If you've ever dropped a cat before, you might have noticed that cats have the remarkable ability to always land on their feet. But have you ever wondered how they accomplish this? If you drop a cat upside down with zero angular velocity, how does it reorient itself without violating the conservation of angular momentum? The answer to that question is an integral part of our project to study the effects of putting a robotic arm on a free-floating platform like a satellite. Our goal was to create a model in MATLAB to study how manipulator motions would detrimentally impact a satellite's workspace, as well as demonstrate how a manipulator could be used as a tool in reorientation maneuvers. Traditionally, robotic arms are deployed on rounded flying forms, either bolted to the floor of a factory or making to a heavy vehicle. But if you were to stick a robotic arm on something more mobile, you would be creating a very ugly control problem. Let's say you have a satellite with an attached manipulator, something DARPA desperately wants for peaceful satellite recycling missions. If you want to reach an object next to you, what would you do? Just swing your arm around and grab it? If you were doing this on Earth, the inverse kinematics would be pretty simple. Plug point A and point B into the robotics toolbox, click run, profit. But on a free-floating platform, every action's equal and opposite reaction goes directly into the base. If you rotate a link 90 degrees relative to a base, it went to translate into a 90 degree rotation of the end a factor in an inertial coordinate system. It will be something less, depending on the ratio of the moment of inertia of the arm and the base. This can be problematic because it changes the effective workspace of your robot. And if you have a multi-link manipulator where the overall moment of inertia of the arms is changing, then you've got a non harmonic system. A classic example of such a system is a ball rolling without slipping on a 2D plane with a state S and Y. If you roll a ball on these two segments and back again, the ball is in the same position and orientation is started in. But if we take a different path back to our initial coordinates, the ball ends up with an angular offset. The orientation of the ball is a function of its path, in addition to its initial and final states. The non-harmonic nature of rotational systems is what enables the cat to change its orientation without breaking physics. By torquing its body with and without its leg extended, a cat is able to rotate itself and get its paws pointed downwards. Let's test this with a 2D simulation. Here we have a two-link planar arm, which is attached to a virtual manipulator, a set of extra links in series with our manipulator, which help keep track of translational and rotational shifts over the course of the simulation. We're using two massless prismatic joints to represent translations and Cartesian coordinates, one link to represent the base, and two for the manipulator itself. Taking this configuration as Q0, we define a set of waypoints for our arm to move through. Using a PD controller to apply the necessary torques to the system, our planar robot can loop through multiple iterations of this sweeping paddling motion. Because the arm exhibits a lower moment of inertia when going from waypoint 1 back to the starting position, the base experiences a net rotation in the opposite direction of the first sweep. Although the orientation of the planar robot is changing, both the angular momentum and the center of mass may constant. If we try to apply these principles seen here to a non-feline 3D system, things get a little messier. Since we don't yet have a 3D robot model, let's look at the next best thing, an astronaut. You can see in this video that because his arms don't move in the same plane as his center of mass, the effect of attempting to reorient himself occurs about an irregular axis. This issue is beyond the scope of our project, but it exemplifies the difficulty of using robotics in space-based applications. The International Space Station has thus far bypassed this problem because its robotic arm is a tiny fraction of its overall mass. It also keeps a human controller in the loop, but as robots get smaller, the challenges will get harder. Research in this area will enable our machines to perform increasingly complex tasks in the future. 